Hi, I'm Kim Ross. I've been a lake steward here on Ames Lake for about 10 years, helping keep track of the water quality and the native and invasive aquatic plants in and around the water. I find the animals, the plants, the whole ecology of the lake completely fascinating, and I think you might too. So let's go see what's in the water. Every year the question comes up, what are all these white dots in the lake? Are they dangerous? Do we need to worry about them? Is it okay to swim while they're here? These are all very good questions. These dots have been part of Ames Lake as long as I have, which is a really long time. But there's more of them than there used to be. So here's another question. Why are there more? Last year, when I saw this in front of a neighbor's house, I decided it was time to finally figure out what it was. Fortunately, our friends at the King County Lakes program are all about answering questions like this. They identified these as gliotrichia. Gliotrichia, which is a colonial species of cyanobacteria. I don't have a setup to take pictures with my microscope, but King County does, and I will attest that under the microscope, this looks just like this. Cool, right? Each one of those spikes is an individual. They spend the winter at the bottom of the lake. As the water warms in spring, they suck up large amounts of phosphorus from the nutrient-rich muck, growing and reproducing into colonies. When the water gets really warm, they rise towards the surface. Now this is the really cool part. They can adjust their own buoyancy by manipulating the gas vesicle segments of their bodies. <laughs> This allows them to lift high enough to be carried or spread by the currents of the lake. Cyanobacteria are also known as blue-green algae, but they aren't actually algae. They are a bacteria that uses chlorophyll. So they're not plants, they're not animals, they're not even algae. We have identified two other forms of cyanobacteria in Ames Lake. This one is Oscillatoria, which also has a cool way of moving the individual bacteria slide or oscillate over each other, orienting the clump to the heat and the sun. Oscillatoria can produce a powerful antioxidant and it's being studied for use as a possible nutritional supplement. This beautiful blue-green algae has bloomed in Ames Lake every August for at least the last six years. It only stays near the surface for a few days though. Then it drops down, splattering the plants and the lake bottom like the aftermath of a paintball battle. The other cyanobacteria we've identified in Ames Lake is a form of filamentous algae, which grows on the surface of the muck at the bottom of the lake. When it's disturbed, it floats up to the surface in clumps like this. So that answers the identification question. We have gliotrichia, oscillatoria, and filamentous blue-green algae in our lake. But what about the other questions? Are they dangerous, and why are there more of them now? You've probably heard about cyanobacteria or blue-green algae creating toxic blooms that make lakes unswimmable. Algae blooms have been happening more and more as our summers have gotten longer and hotter. So does this mean that this stuff is actually dangerous? And if not, what is the difference between these little white dots and the algae that shuts lakes down. One difference is volume. A bunch of dots in the water column at this density doesn't count as a bloom. This does. But the algae could be this thick and still not be toxic. There are thousands of known species of blue-green algae. While some are known for their toxicity, others are known for their incredible nutritional value. Still others have great potential as fuels or for helping clean up the planet. And yet, most cyanobacteria are also capable of producing toxins. So what flips the switch? What makes your average gorgeous cyanobacteria turn into a stealth monster? According to a study at Ball State University in Indiana, higher temperatures make it more likely that cyanobacteria will produce toxins. So the warmer a lake is, the greater the chance that any algae blooming in it will be dangerous. This is not great news. We can do everything in our power to slow down climate change, but we have already locked in several degrees of warming for our planet. Heat also contributes to larger algae blooms, 
But the other thing algae needs to bloom is nutrients. If there are too many nutrients available in the water, algae will grow uncontrolled. Excess fertilizers and pesticides, toxic chemicals, leaky sewer systems or septic tanks all contribute nutrients which get carried into waterways, disrupting their ecosystems and providing the fuel for algae blooms. You don't even have to live on the shores of a lake for your actions to have an impact. We're all in somebody's watershed. The best defense for a lake is to keep it healthy. Lakes that have a diverse, balanced ecosystem are better able to adapt both to the vagaries of nutrients and climate change. We try to keep Ames Lake as healthy as we can. And anytime algae does bloom, we take samples to the King County Environmental Lab in Seattle, where they test it for toxins, just in case. So there you have it. The little white dots in Ames Lake are gliotrichia, which is a form of cyanobacteria, also known as blue-green algae. Thanks for watching. We all need to do what we can to support the health of our lakes, rivers, and other bodies of water. One of the first steps is getting curious. What's in the water? If you have questions you want answered, let me know. And if you want to learn more about what's in Ames Lake, please like this video and subscribe. What is, what's the word? Um, when they're not active, they're... Dormant? They're do okay. okay, so the individual gliotrichia are dormant in the in lake bottom all winter. As the spring comes and the water warms up, they start to rise up. But they bring the phosphates with them that they've gathered from the bottom of the lake. Like they get their nutrients and then they climb up. And they also fix nitrogen. So nitrogen that wasn't available to plants. It's like beans and peas they, and locusts. They fix the nitrogen and make it available to the other plants. So even though these little white dots themselves aren't, um, they aren't like any problem in the lake, but they can actually, they actually assist the lake becoming a higher level of trophic. They, they assist the productivity of the lake. Isn't that weird? One, one part of a big system. One part of a big system.